Thank you so much, Meghna and Madhav, and uh, thank you, Nirmala ji, Honorable Finance Minister, and uh, Nari Shakti uh, has never been on display as much as you have uh, shown it in North Block over the last five years. Steady, robust, and growth numbers that everybody is seeing. Audiences, I think she deserves a big round of applause. Ms. Sita Raman, in the recent uh, budget session, we did dis discuss a lot about uh, the economy and the budget. But right now, we are in the throes of the political session. And uh, elections have been announced. Many are saying, Char so par is now just kids play for the BJP, simply because you're actually taking leaders from every political party uh, three chief ministers, two chief ministers uh, are in jail, and uh, accounts of the largest national uh, opposition party have been frozen. At this rate, maybe 543, all to the BJP. We are not taking people, we are welcoming them. <laughs> we, we, the doors are open. Welcome. And uh, on the tax bit, if taxmen can ask you for payments from you, the claims which have been made, the assessee you or I will have to pay it, so is the party if it has violated that exemption which is given to them. As a political party, well, you, you file your assessments, you don't pay a tax. But you have not filed an assessment. And it is not just overnight. It's been going on from 21. You went to one court, the court said, pay it up. The second court, pay it up. Appeal, pay it up. No way have they said the IT was wrong in coming to you. Then you accept to pay some money. The entire amount which is levied on you, interest, penalty, all inclusive, you don't pay. You just pay a bit. And again, another bit. And then suddenly you think, oh, let me go to the court again. But suddenly elections are on, so you think best is to make political capital out of it. No. In fact, somebody was joking to me. One of the arguments which they put before the court and also in the media was, how are we to fight elections? All this money has been taken away. They should ask each one of their MLAs whose houses are full of cash. Didn't ED go and uh, raid some of them? They should actually give the money back. And even, sorry, uh, you can always say, oh, finance minister is talking like this, irresponsible. Is she a political leader or a finance minister? The money which was taken from the party towards National Herald can be given back to the party. Use it. So this is such a frivolous, but for a national party which has governed this country, you want to spend time on this? Pay up your due, get going with your work, set an example for the taxpayers of the country. But this is not political vendetta. Absolutely not. From 21 and three, four courts, the appeal court, the high court, the IT, AT, everybody, they could have said it, saying there's no case made, made out, the tax authority should step back. None of them have said that. So it's not just me. There is a case made out, they have to pay the tax. So let me ask you, when uh, Heman Soren is targeted, as the opposition says, he steps down, Mr. Arvind Kejriwal, uh, tormented by the uh, extortion directorate, as the enforcement directorate is uh, being called, uh, isn't this undue pressure on political parties at the time of elections? And does this necessarily uh, encourage free and fair polls? Because uh, you have an unfair advantage of being in the seat of power and putting everybody else uh, on the back foot. Navika, just as you say free and fair, would you please add law abiding? <laughs> Eight summons. Eight summons, you have one or the other reason, and there you didn't tell me that this is political vendetta. You said, no, I have some other work. 
no, my assembly is on, budget session is on, no, I have a campaign to go somewhere. At that time, political vendetta didn't suit you. Now political vendetta, when even the court has said, go up here. Now because media should be asking meaningful questions rather than asking me a tongue-in-cheek. Media, media is in a position where it gets beaten up regardless. If we ask you questions, you beat us up. If we don't ask you questions, the opposition beats us up. Uh, so we are quite used to being beaten up. Opposition beats you up? Yeah. I don't. <laughs> but you just... None of us do. I mean, do we beat the media? No way. <laughs> We've not touched the media, but the entire universe, all the brotherhood of journalism everywhere, saying freedom of speech in India. I one day sat down and looked at the list of garments harassing journalists. Turns out they're all non-BJP garments. But the impression about India outside is because people now look at India, they look at Prime Minister. And therefore they think he's the one who's harassing. No. In India's federal setup, journalists are getting thrashed in many of the states. And I don't thrash you, but you don't ask them, hey, why are you thrashing me? Modi doesn't thrash me. Say it. I'm boycotted. Who do I say this to? But <laughs> never mind. The question, the question really is, uh, two chief ministers behind bars, uh, uh, every political party is on the back foot uh, facing ED questions. Uh, you say you welcome people. Very soon people are saying at the rate people are joining the BJP, you'll become the reserve political bank of India. You'll have to lend uh, uh, candidates to other uh, political parties to fight elections. Uh, uh, is, that, is that something that we'll see soon? Very interesting proposition. I think you should hold tonight's nine o'clock debate on it. But honestly, uh, people who you wouldn't touch with the barge pole, people who you actually called, uh, uh, you know, icons of corruption, are now suddenly all of them in your party. Uh, uh, talk about talk about the war widows and their uh, Ashok Chavan is in your party. Ajit Pawar, Chakki P Singh, Chakki P Singh, irrigation scam, seventy thousand crore. Oh, lo and behold, he's joined the BJP. Now he's not Chakki P Singh. Now he's uh, icon of development in Maharashtra. I want to ask you, where where does real politics of development begin, and where does hypocrisy end? Real development politics happens and keeps happening. Nothing changes it. People are welcome to come to BJP. But the core work of the BJP, whether it is today, whether it is BJP of pre-14, whether it is BJP of earlier, or even Jamsung, has continued. I'm not saying A is an opportunist or B is or C is not. If people see work happening, and they think as political representatives in the ground, a party is making a difference. They obviously would want to come and join. But the BJP's value systems and the way in which the party runs under certain leadership continue. I don't think there is ever a compromise on that. So tainted leaders joining your party, no bar. Everybody is welcome, even they are welcome, with a red uh, carpet uh, rolled out for them. As I said, party is open. We welcome everybody. Everybody. Yes. Even people who have nine CBI cases against them. Parties welcoming everybody. Ms. Nirmala Sitaraman, let me, let me also ask you. Very recently, uh, a very well-known film star joined uh, your party. I'm talking about Kangana Ranaut. There were statements made by uh, the social media chairperson of uh, the Congress party, Supriya Srinet, for which even the Election Commission of India has now issued a notice. I want to ask you, statements of this kind, how does that make you as a woman politician feel? Uh, is this uh, an easy statement to make about an actor or is this uh, a bit of a mindset issue where women are at the receiving end? It is a mindset issue. It is also readily thrown at people who come from the theater or the film industry. And every time I hear it, I really 
feel awkward. Sometimes I come out openly, sometimes I don't, but I do feel awkward. And it is outrageous uh, when uh, people in similar fields, meaning today in politics, similar in politics, are the ones who come in to comment like this. At least once you are in politics, you know you represent people's aspirations. You serve that cause. You would be reticent much before you come out with such comments. It doesn't come well or it doesn't go well with leaders who are in public life. Certainly, oh, is it all right if somebody else uh, does it? No, it's not all right. But this has an impact on so many people who watch you, who follow you, who are associated with the party, who think this is my leadership. We just can't afford that kind of a statement. And I'm not reserving this comment only because this person is a Congress person, any party. I think it's high time in India immediately such a person is made to apologize unconditionally, irrespective of party. I don't reserve it to some party and not to my party, wherever it comes from. It's abhorrent. We should reject it. And what do you think about the explanation that has been given by Ms. Uh, Supriya Srinet, uh, who incidentally, uh, in her previous profession, was our colleague uh, uh, and, and a journalist covering the finance ministry. I don't know if you had uh, yes, opportunity had. of interacting yes. with her. How do you look at the explanation that uh, she has given, that uh, there are many people who can access her uh, uh, social media handles and somebody has done that and uh, she herself does not endorse this. It made you the buy problem that? worse. It actually made the problem even worse for her. I don't think it helped the cause at all. A calm thinking head could have done something else differently, straight away apologized, would have been a better solution. But I'm no person to advise her. After all, she's been a journalist earlier. You're so scared of journalism. Oh, yes. Are you making oh, a point on, on the stage? Yes, because you're sitting next to a journalist. It's most unfair, uh, Miss... Uh... Next to a journalist, a senior journalist, Navika Kumar. So, a, a very highly placed uh, woman journalist. Yes, I'm high conscious pitched. of that. High pitched? No, no, not high pitched. <laughs> but I am very so, conscious of that. No, but with due respects, I am conscious that particularly women cannot undermine another woman. And I'm not saying men can. No, men cannot. But it's worse when another woman does it. Well said. Let me, let me ask you about uh, uh, this Abki Bar Char Sopar. How realistic uh, is this target? Is it just a slogan to enthuse the cadres? Or, uh, uh, you know, do you really think this is going to happen given the emphasis on the south of India? And why am I asking this question? Because in 2019, uh, you had Karnataka under your belt. You got uh, 25 seats in Karnataka itself and four seats in other south Indian states. That took your total up to 29 out of the 130 seats that, that come from south India to the parliament. This time around, you don't even have Karnataka, a government in Karnataka, uh, but the Prime Minister's blitzkrieg in the South, the way you've been traveling in the South. Do you really have huge expectations from the South, or is this, uh, is this a slogan and uh, uh, you know, plan of action for future elections? Navika, it was the Honorable Prime Minister who put that target before us. When he said 370 for BJP, 400 for NDA, it's the Prime Minister speaking. Do you think it is said in a lighter vein? Not at all. You may take it as a target for us to work. We'll have to strive for it. But he is confident that today in the country, people have seen what the last 10 years have given them. Stability, no internal major disturbances, no terrorist attack. No corruption, free food for people who deserve it. The way in which many of the schemes have reached every citizen who deserves to get it. And the way in which investments have been made to create some of the finest asset for the country, 
which will last another 100 years. Highways, roadways, airports, seaports being improved, middle class citizen reaching, to, reaching his nearest Udan airport, which is not a big deal, just no frills, just take an aircraft, go and reach the airport you want to go when you want to go see your children abroad. Every section has seen visibly development happening. So, and also the way in which they respond to the Prime Minister. These are not mobilized crowds. And the people who listen to his monkey bath right back to him saying, you spoke, to, spoke about me, who's an unknown figure in my village, but today my village knows about it in spite of me having made the road between my village to the next cemetery because we were carrying our dead through, you know, mud holes and uh, ups and downs of a river and uh, the hillock. So identifying common citizens who deserve to be praised are measures which have reached the PM to the hearts of the citizens. So he's confident, we are confident, all of us are confident that there is a resonance in the ground. And therefore 370 is not just a dream, it's not just an adesh for the BJP karyakarta, it is a realizable target, we are working for it. And the 10 years performance will speak in the ground. So let me ask you, what are the numbers out of 130 seats in South of India? How many will the BJP get this time? I'm not going to give you any number at the moment. The work is happening. You're the finance minister. Numbers is the game you play all day. Yeah, but that's money. This is constituency. <laughs> <laughs> so seat, seats to Lok Sabha, you're not putting a, a bet on that? Probably a bit too early. I might do it a bit later. Okay, so then we'll have to hold another conclave Ooh, and have, have you on again to give us a prediction of the uh, seats. Uh, uh, but let me, let me ask you, hand on your heart, do you think the way the agencies are let on uh, opposition leaders is, is really fair? I, I'm not saying there is no corruption, there is no case. But the timing of it and the fact that it... Uh, somehow or the other tries to put opposition leaders and opposition parties uh, on the back foot. Uh, is, this, is this a strategy for the BJP? Or uh, will you say uh, the very kosher uh, law must take its own course because that is something uh, that most politicians end up saying? No. Law must take its own course didn't happen between 2004 and 14. Every day there was a scandal happening. And there were people from the government then who said caged, parrot, CBI. It did do nothing. None of the enforcement agencies did everything, anything at all on the ground, except, of course, going after Prime Minister Modi, who was the chief minister in Gujarat. Except, of, uh, of course, going after the home minister, now home minister, home minister then of Gujarat. So the caged parrot is now led to do its job. And that is when there is no scandal in the government. So obviously, the cage parish will not come to me. It will go where the scandal is. And the scandal is galore there. Tell me one law enforcement visit which has happened to anybody and where they've come back, Kali Hath. Kejriwal's house. Oh, His no, wife, no, Sunita no. Kejriwal, has done a press conference and said, Ek bhi paisa nahi mila kahin se. It's a foisted case. It's all right. You, what do you expect them to say? Liquor policy has been... You, me, everybody. The Congress party wrote letters after letter saying why is action not being taken on him? Liquor policy is open and shut case. Everybody knew what was happening. They had to change the policy afterwards. By then the damage was done. And it is that which is making all of them go in. So there's nothing. Excuse me. Tell me one voice in this crowd which will tell me that there's nothing about the liquor policy. We are only you know, following uh, and asking the enforcement agencies to go and harass them. The liquor policy was leaking from everywhere. All of us knew about it. And it went so far as to involve even a southern state's political leaders. And people are speaking like parrot, taking the names of people. That's getting reported in the media. So what is not found in my house business? 
But uh, Mr. Kejriwal uh, says he has the right to run the government from the jail. He's not convicted yet. And he's giving orders from the jail. कहीं पानी कम है तो पानी पहुंचा दो कहीं दवाई कम है तो मोहल्ला क्लिनिक में दवाई पहुंचा दो ही इज स्टिल वरिड अबाउट द कॉमन पीपल द आम आदमी ऑफ डेट नो आई डोंट वांट टू टेक इफ आई से समथिंग इट विल अपीयर एज दो आई एम टेकिंग वाइकेरियस प्लेशर इन सेइंग इट बट लेट्स बी क्लियर दिल्ली एंड गवर्नेंस इन दिल्ली इज अकरिंग नाउ सिटिंग इन द जेल मोहल्ला क्लिनिक्स वेयर रॉटन दे आर रॉटिंग when the chief minister was out in delhi free to do what he wanted to govern you had no visit to the mohalla kili you had no special session of the delhi assembly taking care of the mohallas mohalla clinics now suddenly he has all the time to think sitting there so he is thinking about mohalla clinics ah. now what was he thinking about he is going before to be that better i Is... leave it to you you might want to prefer it delhi governance went down the drain the chief minister was everywhere with the help of chief minister punjab who was actually playing the concierge for the helicopter or the aircraft punjab government heli uh, aircraft was being used and it since it can't fly without the chief minister he was accompanying him forgetting what is happening or what is to be done in punjab it led to such blatant misuse governance suffered in punjab and in delhi now if governance is improving i don't want to say this sentence any further no so you are saying that he should be in jail and continue to no, govern well no i'm not well. saying anything it's for the citizens of delhi to think about what next so let me let me also ask you the bjp if it was very confident and this is a question opposition asks very often if you were so confident why are you taking uh, people left right and center from other political parties why are you breaking governments uh, even in himachal pradesh you've imported i think uh, nine uh, mlas uh, six from congress three independents uh, uh you you are uh, also now suddenly finding alliance partners uh, when for 10 years you didn't have any need for them is it uh, nervousness uh, kya bjp dar gayi hai opposition as when this can't hold good can it bjp dar gayi hai magar bjp bej rahi hai ed make up your mind yaar yeah. <laughs> i can't be dara hua and you cbi to go after you and equally invite political parties to come have alliance with me so these convenience arguments which are being cooked up by opposition parties are essentially telling me that we as a party are being efficient enough to keep our agenda moving forward and being alert about developments which are happening around us now if mlas have left the himachal assembly resigned they are going to face an election in the by election if the people reject them they are not going to win at all so if congress is so sure that they have won on the congress symbol and because they believed in the congress dynastic politics they should win again congress should win again against these people who have left the party and come over to bjp the proof of the pudding is there so no point in alleging us saying oh independents have also gone to you so and so are people are choosing to say in himachal pradesh i will not contest the election because it's not favorable hasn't the pcc president of himachal pradesh said that she's a very senior hand i respect her not for what she said but i respect her even otherwise she's a very senior congress party's leader today she is the peace she has said it saying sorry i can't contest because it's not favorable in tamil nadu till yesterday congress could not find candidates to contest and in the last minute they thought of mahila congress chief and therefore put her if your priority was to give a woman leader you should have put her in the first place even on the first day five lists have come out and you are still thinking of who to place beg x beg y beg somebody else and every fellow says no leave me i don't want to come and contest 
and then you suddenly think of I can win the game by bringing the woman whether she wins or not if she wins all right we'll claim see we also support women and if she loses we can always say that is why we never choose women because winability is zero and you make a bakra of a woman leader of your party you're not getting people to contest let's have congress accept this at least once in gujarat no congressman wants to be in the party they're all leaving the congress and going away so please get your house to order before you day in and day out talk about nyay jodo you know dilwado kuch kin kisi ke liye skills ke liye i'll give you right kaham bhai have some coherence in your narrative i want to ask you you said you uh, respect the pcc chief in himachal any other congress people who you respect i respect a lot of them how many sonia gandhi know. i i do respect her why not of course she's been holding the party for some time she's shown leadership but of course today the environment for congress is very different people are not able to you know uh, accept their uh, leadership because it's all in a disarray there are quite a lot of congress people who i respect even today there are very senior leaders in state level who have also been you know uh, for a very long time in congress party and they've served the party but unfortunately today they are all listless because there's no leadership rahul gandhi bharat jodo nyay yatra 2.0 what do you think uh, where was it happening when was it happening it just media didn't give it space leave me so so we gave it enough space no, every no, day no, not at all. he to- spoke about caste censors he spoke about jati janganna he spoke about uh, so many issues uh, it was in the media you can't blame the media for everything not the front page kind you know you respect to whatever they do congress party has a reserved front page slot yeah. it didn't fill that slot you kept it alive aapke you dar se they will say they But said aapke dar se media nahi dikha raha no front page mein nahi dikha hai na kahi dal diya but congress ka kuch aur vishay idhar hai jaise people have left the party that is in front page not rahul gandhi in the front page so what do you think about rahul gandhi's leadership qualities i i, I seriously want to ask you how do you see him as an opponent and in every in every election there is Uh, an incumbent party which fights against an opponent there is rahul gandhi uh, leading as the national alliance uh, national uh, political party leading an uh, alliance uh, of other political parties consisting of trinamool congress samajwadi party all all of these parties what do you think about the opposition and each of these leaders no they each have their own strengths no doubt and you ask me about rahul gandhi i'll also say this he's got it in a platter he's inherited the leadership in a platter i'm sure if he had contemplated on how he wants to take himself forward i'm not here to advise him let me first put that before you but if he wants to take his leadership along with the rest of them there's a lot more to introspect india wants a lot of you know opposition leaders who can be strong enough to put their voice across opposition is required in this country there's no way anyone says uh oh, it's all right but they have to rise to the occasion what do you think about mamta banerji well she's been winning in west bengal can it be less of an achievement she's a fighter no doubt and uh, she says that you have given her stepmotherly uh, uh, treatment you don't give uh, uh, funds to states and this is something that comes from the dmk government in tamil nadu it comes from bengal it comes from uh, all states uh, ruled by opposition parties that the center the finance ministry is not giving them funds that are due to them well not all states urissa doesn't tell you that wo to aapke dost hai na andhra pradesh doesn't tell you that alliance ho raha tha nahi hua ho jayega nahi hoga matlab they are yeah, in that but, but even then they are also states which are i mean they are ruled by their party is not by bjp they are not an open alliance with them. one and second i would want this to be proved by any state all those you have listed out saying i have denied them their due funds without legitimate reasons 
you don't give me audited certificates. You don't give me utilization certificate. In West Bengal particularly, teams, both of the center and the state, went together to the field to check if there has been any leakage. Together they've come back to say, yes, there has been leakage and this is the number. You would correct it and then come back to me to say, therefore, this much has got to be given and not that much which I claimed earlier. It wasn't just the central team. Simultaneously, together, you had the state team going together to village after village and proving they have given it to people who did not exist in the village. Now, because you're asking me so much in detail, let me tell you further. And they didn't find these people, but monies have been paid. So it. no, this much of pilferage has happened. You don't retrieve the money. On the contrary, because you know you can't retrieve it, you're filling it up with additional money, taxpayers' money, and saying, no, all right, you take this as retrieved. Where did it come from? From the treasury again. So, anyai ke upar anyai. And when I say, sorry, how will I give money now? You're doing wrong. You you're stepmotherly treatment to West Bengal. Somebody should stand up and ask these questions. And when we ask these questions in the parliament, we are shouted down, they walk out, they refuse, they say, Modi, you're a dictator. Are Baba, you are filling up the coffer with money which was supposed to have been retracted from wrong hands. You didn't. Instead, you're putting the money again from that taxpayer's treasury. How right is that? And when questions are asked on these, oh, stepmotherly treatment. So you're saying there are ghost accounts. What kind of money that we are talking about? Well, last two years, this has been debated in the parliament. Every session I've answered this. Every session the rural development minister has answered this. But no, the TMC will still say the same allegation. Majorly, if this is the way pilferage has happened, and it is on record that this is the way money has been retrieved, will you accept it? I ask of you all, will you accept this? You've also targeted their uh, member of parliament, Mohua Moitra, in the past. Once again, ED unleashed on her. And, uh, uh, you know, once again, uh, around election, Questions, CBI raids, um, everything happening. Clearly, there is a pattern people say. The pattern is only attack the opposition, not the ruling party, their MPs, their supporters. Nobody touches them. Look, this balancing act nonsense doesn't work because we have to prove that we are very sincere. Law pursues them who disobey it. If you've disobeyed, you will have enforcement agencies coming to you. And just because you belong to the opposition party, I don't need to, for every two in the opposition, I need two from my party. Law of the land, yeah, please, let's respect it and stop making political arguments over it. If they are, if they are found fault, meaning if the law enforcement agencies have been found fault with because you pursued them on political interests, Courts are going to thrash us down. The credit, credibility of the enforcement agencies will all come down. They'll be severely pulled up. You think agencies are not conscious of these sort of things? 
the courts have thrashed you down on the issue of electoral bonds. On the issue of electoral bonds, you were seen on the back foot trying to hide information that should have been transparently available to citizens of India, not my words, words of uh, the apex court, the Supreme Court. And now, as more and more people are going through the data, they're saying that at least 16 such companies who have donated to the BJP and other political parties have donated after they were raided by one enforcement agency or the other. Two or three things, uh, Navika. The courts have thrashed a law which existed. It was a law passed by the parliament. And based on the law, bonds have been bought, bonds have been encashed. Based on that law, bonds have been bought, bonds have been encashed by all parties. Maybe just one who didn't want it. Okay. CPM. So now when it has been encashed by all parties, based on a law, so it was not unlawful during that time when the law was in place. Today the Supreme Court has said no, that law shall not be. And having said that that law is no longer valid, they still went ahead to say, reveal everything which happened during that phase. And it's also equally true, I'm not uh, dissecting the court's order, but it's equally true that at that time, confidentiality of the donor was a uh, given in the law. I remember Arun Jaitley speaking about it in the parliament, post which it was passed. But never mind, the court wanted that to be disclosed, it has been disclosed. After the disclosure, now more than 10 days have passed, everybody has done a complete tooth combing of the data. Everyone has received from everybody, every donor has given everybody. ED raids have happened even on those who have given the money to BJP. You may pick up and say, ED raids have happened and therefore some donors picked up bonds and gave. But I want to also put it the other way around. People had given money through the bonds. ED raids still happened. It didn't give them the immunity. No, but they are talking about money coming in right after the raids, which I'm is... I'm exactly saying this. Even after the money has been given, we have still sent the ED. If we are sending CD, EDs at all, EDs are independent to do what they want. So, I think it's reached a stage where political parties think it's... If you show one finger business, you know, three are coming back to me, so better leave the topic where it is. It's reached that stage because all kinds of permutation combination have been used to, you know, go through the data. Nobody is wiser now. The very party which now says, oh, this is a scam, this is a scandal, had also taken money through the bonds. Tell me what moral authority anyone has to speak, because it was the law then. It went lawfully. It was a, a step better than what prevailed earlier. What prevailed earlier was a law where it was free for all. You could give in cash, you could give in, you know, boris, you could come in suitcases, you could do anything. Whereas what this one did was at least that the donor will put it in his account, the recipient party will put it into it, its own account, so there is a money trail that you can establish. Is it not one step better than what was before? That was a story in the electoral, electoral bond business. But that's not now the case because the court has struck it down. So next term, if you were to come back, uh, will you look at uh, financing of elections uh, and, uh, you know, meet the twin ambitions and goals of transparency as well as controlling money power in politics? It is important, and we need to have a lot more debate about it, a lot more inputs from stakeholders. We need to understand how to better the system which has been rejected now. 
which was still better than the earlier prevailing system, which is what we've gone back to now, we need to do something better. But a lot more work is required. Before I let you go, Ms. Nirmala Sitaraman, uh, there is an ongoing uh, Twitter war that's on between you uh, and, and Congress uh, uh, media head uh, Jairam Ramesh on the Atal Pension Scheme. What would, what would you like to say to Jairam Ramesh today? I've said it all on the Twitter. But, but when they say that you're forcing people into insurance schemes, uh, he has a point? Not at all. This coercion business is so much a Congress tactic. I quoted even in my first tweet. And it's worth remembering. The State Bank of India's then chairman, R.K. Talwar, was a legend in banking. He was coerced to quit his job only because he refused to give loan to the dynasty's favorites. He refused. Stubbornly, he said, no, that party I cannot give because it's not right. And they made sure they breathed down his neck. And he stayed put. He said, let me see how you're removing me. Remove me if you want. But I'm not resigning. Coercion to the fullest was used by Congress to make the man leave. A legend in banking history of India. That's coercion, Navika. Nobody else can master it like the way Congress has. Well, uh... Let me, let me do a rapid-fire round with you. And on the rapid-fire, I want to ask you, who's your uh, favorite current-day politician? I won't answer it. Because Why? Current-day politician? Not one. There are several, for several reasons. One I like for something, another I like for something else, and so on. So I can't name one in particular. Achha, one opposition leader who you really have respect for, current-day. Again, I won't be able to answer it. There are few people. There are few people. Oh, come on, this is Are you mischief. spoiled for choice? This, this is, this is a country of 140 crore people. You can't choose one. 140 crore, and therefore I can't choose one. <laughs> there are just too many. Okay. Uh, what does Nirmala Sitaraman uh, uh, do in her free time? Listen to a lot of music, cooking, and read. And Twitter wars on the side? Yes. No, that's actually time-consuming, but it's worth the fight. And uh, during elections, uh, uh, how, how, how do you want to take the message of your government to the people of India? Well, I'll be campaigning. I'll be going to a lot of Nukat Sabhas. I'll also be attending a lot of media events um, and going with the candidates. Like tomorrow, I'll be going for Rajiv Chandrasekhar's campaign in Tirvanandapuram. So, yes, I'll be on the campaign trail. So, so let, me, let me ask you, uh, as, as a woman finance minister, were you at the receiving end uh, uh, of a little bit of peer pressure, a little bit of competitiveness? Does it happen to uh, women in uh, political parties and women even in the cabinet? Yes, it does. Yes? Yes, it does. It does happen. and uh, Backstabbing also? Uh, well, I don't know about that because I'm still surviving. So, <laughs> no, but yes, there's a lot of... Um, at least the social media has become very powerful, a tool in the hands of everyone. True democracy, I can't complain. But it is so used easily, readily, to target women politicians. Women in any field, I would think. But I think we'll have to just survive it. We've just got to ignore it. And if you start responding, there's just no end to it. So let me ask you, most of your colleagues uh, uh, who were from the Rajya Sabha have been uh, uh, now, uh, are now in the fray for contesting Lok Sabha elections. Is Nirmala Sitaraman also going to contest uh, a Lok Sabha seat this no, time? No, no. The party did ask me. But um, after thinking over it for a week or 10 days, I just went back to say, maybe not. Because uh, my party president did ask me, would you want to contest from somewhere in the south? Uh, option is yours, Tamil Nadu or Andhra Pradesh. But uh, I don't have that kind of money to contest. I also have a problem because whether it is Andhra or Tamil Nadu, it's also going to be a question of, you know, various other winnability criteria that they use. Are you from this community? Are you from that religion? Are you from this? 
I said, no, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. So the party was graceful enough, and I'm very grateful, to accept my arguments and said, Chalo, you won't. It's all right. So I'm not contesting. Okay, so money power, even the finance minister of India does not have money to contest an election. That is a statement. Yes. I mean, the consolidated how can fund the of India is not mine. <laughs> money power, my budget, my salary, my earning, my saving is mine, not the consolidated fund of India. And so all other. Obviously, I can't. Well said, well said, uh, Ms. Nirmala Sitaraman. Uh, may we have uh, more finance ministers who set an example as you have. And uh, it's a proud moment uh, for India to have had a woman finance minister, the first full-time woman finance minister for uh, the record number of uh, budgets that you have uh, presented and uh, also surviving the full five-year term. Uh, despite, as you say, uh, the daggers that were drawn out. Thank you. Thank you very much, Navika. And thank you, Times. <laughs> Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman.